After a century of brotherhood, the special bond between Australia and New Zealand is fracturing. A growing problem with gang violence has led to a law and order crackdown, with well over a thousand New Zealanders deported from Australia. Australia, which has always been deemed our big brother, now actually bullies us. If they cherish the life that they lead here in Australia, they need to start respecting Australians. They need to abide by the law. Some New Zealanders have been locked up in Australia for years without charge, trial or conviction before being thrown out. The easiest way to put it is like, you've died, you're a ghost and you can still see your old life, you know what I mean? A lot of people say don't, don't uh, judge a book by its cover. You put me in a detention and a maximum jail for nothing. What have I done wrong? I do not think as a government we should be standing aside while these kind of threats to human rights are taking place. I've travelled from Australia to New Zealand to assess the damage this row is doing to what has for more than a hundred years been one of the closest relationships between neighbouring countries anywhere in the world. We get um, an email from the probation or airport police to say that a deportee is arriving on such and such a flight at such and such a time. They are refugees because in a way they are having to leave a country they don't want to leave and arriving somewhere where they don't really know and have to reinvent their lives again. You just have to do what I tell you. All right, next few days, yeah, I'm coming like you, mum, auntie. So you get $251.50 for that? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yep. Deported in handcuffs onto a flight from Australia, 40-year-old oh, okay. so Tyrone Jones is now back in New Zealand with a new phone courtesy of the city of Christchurch. There's your number. Thank you cool. very much. Oh, no awesome. And I've got your number in my phone, so I'll text you my phone, so then you'll have my number. That's awesome. The Christchurch City Council have been absolutely wonderful because they just know if you can get people who feel welcome into a place, there's less likely of them um, not feeling part of society. Uh, What's that feel like? Uh, it's all right? It feels like home. It does, isn't it? Yeah. The relief when they get in the car and I say, I'm going to take you to a motel and get you some food. Two or three, it's not that many. And men who have left their children behind. Shocking, I had, we had one guy. Yeah, what they've left behind, it's just, it's too much for a lot of them to actually grasp at the time too. They haven't actually grasped the enormity of it. Kids are sort of acting a bit differently because you're, you're in handcuffs and plain sight. So the child, your children have lost their home and they've lost their dad. Yep. Wow, wow. That's going to create a lot of problems later on, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Mm. Although Tyrone had sole custody of his three children, he was deported after breaching a domestic violence order placed on him by his ex-wife. Uh, one hot and spicy and two regular. Can he claims that? that there was never any violence. Yep. Yep. She sent me text messages. I sent her two back and police breached me on it and gave me jail. So I had nine months sentence at the top and three months I served and then instead of going out to my family and my kids I ended up going to detention and spending another three months there. I don't understand why I've been labelled as a bad character when all I was doing was being a father of three kids on my own uh, with only my father's support. Wow, this is an absolute, this is so much better than teaching. Now his children are living in Australia with grandparents and he's been banished to a country he hasn't known for almost two decades. Welcome home. Excellent. Thank you. You want a hug? Thank you so right. much for okay. your help today. That 
Earthquake ravaged Christchurch is a city with a big heart for those deported from Australia. It's been years since I've been here, so yeah, just trying to get a feel for the place. For now, Tyrone is just trying to adjust to a life away from his children. It's like I've been labelled a monster. I'm not looking for vengeance or a life of crime. I just hope to see my kids one day. Many in New Zealand, including members of the government here in the country's capital, Wellington, believe Australia's deportation policy, separating families and exiling people, is draconian and inhumane. The country's Minister of Justice, Andrew Little, is an outspoken critic. You know, New Zealanders, they don't like what they're seeing. They don't think it is right. They don't think it is fair. And they certainly want the government to be letting Australia know what we think is right and wrong about all this, and we're doing that. So are you concerned that Australia is breaching human rights here? Well, I think if you look at the international sort of agreements, the UN conventions that cover this sort of thing, I don't think that is consistent or what is happening is consistent with those UN conventions. New Zealanders on average contribute a huge amount to Australia. New Zealanders go there to work hard, sometimes they play hard, and they expect their Aussie cousins to give them a fair go. Many are seeing that at the moment, they're not getting that fair go. For decades, Australians and New Zealanders have had the reciprocal rights to live and work in each other's country. But Australia has unilaterally curtailed those rights with changes to the law making it easier to cancel visas and deport non-citizens. And for those sentenced to 12 months jail or more, mandatory deportation. Authorities have cancelled the visas of four violent criminals with links to the... Police search warrant over the door! In Australia, media coverage of deportations has focused on gang violence. But many of the more than a thousand New Zealanders deported have only minor criminal convictions or none at all. The Minister for Home Affairs has the call. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. I thank the Honourable. As Australia's Home Affairs Minister, Peter Dutton oversees a portfolio including Australia's Federal Police and Border Force and its immigration detention facilities. I'll tell you what I've done, Mr Speaker. I've cancelled 3,700 visas of criminals in this country, people that would have gone on to commit offences against Australians. I have cancelled... Under recently changed laws, the Home Affairs Minister holds extraordinary powers to deport people on character grounds alone. So even when no crime has been committed, he is also the sole arbiter. If a deportation decision is overturned by an Australian court, the minister can ignore the judgment and simply amend the order and deport them anyway. If they have been involved in violence, gang violence, terrorist related activity, whatever it might be, uh, then they won't be getting Australian citizenship. Often it is portrayed in the context of the wider debate about immigration and remains a hot political issue with Mr Dutton making regular appearances in the Australian media, espousing his government's tough stance. We closed the detention centres and we kept... Back in New Zealand, the Justice Minister there has grave misgivings about Australian law and how it is being implemented. You've done all your growing up in Australia. You are a product of Australia. And I don't think it's right that if a person in that situation starts offending criminally, uh, that they should face deportation back to New Zealand, a country they haven't known of, really, because they left in their infancy. That just doesn't seem right to me. Now, look, I, I accept they're a sovereign country. They can make whatever laws they like. But a lot of New Zealanders are now being drawn into this. 1,200 deportations in the last three years, three and a bit years, a lot more are going to happen. Uh, what I've said to ministers in the Australian government, that while that is the case, and while they are New Zealand citizens, they are entitled to have the New Zealand government speak up for them, and we will speak up for them. In the largest city on New Zealand's South Island, Christchurch, 
the Bridge of Remembrance stands as a monument to a close alliance forged in times of war, when Australians and New Zealanders fought side by side as part of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, known as the Anzacs. My father served two tours in Vietnam and I'm very proud of the history that my family have, have contributed to Anzac, like many other families in New Zealand. A century after the birth of the Anzac legend, Philippa Payne despairs of where it has all gone. Australia, which has always been deemed our big brother, now actually bullies us. Philippa is now a campaigner for deportees because she believes Australia has trashed its closest friendship and sullied its human rights record. There's been 1,300 New Zealand citizens deported already. The detention centres in Australia are full of New Zealand citizens. And let's not forget that we are the number one nationality in Australian detention centres. New Zealand citizens, full Australian detention centres. How are your children coping at the moment? Uh, this week's been pretty difficult. Uh, I've been ringing my kids every day and just recently they've started starting to cry on the phone. And from her home in suburban Christchurch, Philippa keeps in touch with some of the hundreds of New Zealanders who've been detained whilst awaiting or fighting deportation. Yeah, I don't think they're doing very well outside without me. 32-year-old Aidan Brown is being held in an immigration detention centre in Western Australia. In my heart, I believe I'm Australian. Uh, I learned everything here, I've I done all my school here, all my work ethic, this is from Australia. Aidan has lived in Australia since he was four years old, but has been held in immigration detention after being arrested over a driving offence. That charge was dropped, but because of a previous conviction as a juvenile, he was deemed of bad character and ordered out of Australia. In my situation and a lot of the boys here's situation, a lot of us haven't even done crimes. Uh, we've done minor crimes, like my one was a driving offence. And Australia's law has classed us a bad character. So. I reckon it's just been a bit judgmental. Personally, it tears me down, knowing that I can't do anything, especially for my family. But deep down in my heart, I know I'm not coping. I do it because I'm very passionate about what is going on between our Trans-Tasman Travel Agreement. I believe that Australia's government legislatively discriminates against New Zealand citizens in Australia. Fighting a deportation can mean months or years in custody awaiting the outcome of the legal process. I think it's time for us to stand up and actually make sure that our people are OK. Many, like the man we've come to see today, choose to accept being deported rather than risk spending longer in detention in Australia. Ah, uh, there we go. We're here and there he is. Hey Justin, how are you? Well, that's good. Justin Miller also moved to Australia with his parents as a small child in 1988. Smells nice and clean. Yeah, I know. Earlier this year, he was deported to New Zealand, to a country he could barely remember. I'm pretty sure a lot of the Australian public doesn't really understand the full extent of what's happening. I love Australia and its society, and I still do. It's just their politics that I don't like at the moment. The, Australia's got a problem with crime, and sending people away isn't the way to deal with it. Justin Miller says his happy childhood in Western Australia took a downward spiral after he was molested by a priest. I turned to alcohol and drugs to get away from what happened to me at boarding school. Um, I grew up in a high in a suburb with a very high crime rate at the time and yeah, I just, like a lot of other people around me in that area, we ended up in trouble. Like many of the hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders living in Australia as permanent residents, Justin says he had never felt the need to seek Australian citizenship. I've got an Aussie partner, I've got an Aussie child and 
yeah, you just never even thought of it. Yes, I had stuffed up in life and committed crimes, but I'd paid for those crimes. I'd learned from my mistakes and I was making a general go of life. Right, that's finished for today. Awesome. All I can do is now is prove the Australian government wrong with saying that I'm a totally bad person, it's not worth nothing, you know. But I am worth something and so is my family and friends. Five years ago on Australia's Gold Coast, a brawl between members of a motorcycle club captured the headlines. Stay back where you are. Within weeks, some states had enacted laws banning motorcycle club membership and turning members into outlaws. A lot of people say don't, don't uh, judge a book by its cover. For years, Lee Tipoya lived the Australian dream. With a thriving carpet business, Lee and his young family lived a comfortable life in suburban Australia, until one day in 2015, when he was arrested by a gang crime squad. He was told his visa was cancelled, and he was thrown into a maximum security prison without any charges. So I went through the system and uh, finally got processed, as they say, and um, yeah, ended up in a back unit in lockdown. You know, it's uh, pretty hard to take in, you know. Lee's visa had been cancelled because he was a member of the Rebels Motorcycle Club, which the Western Australian State Government had declared a criminal gang. Outraged at his incarceration on no charges, Lee took his case to Australia's highest court. And that's the full High Court, seven High Court judges. Uh, and we proved to the government and Australia that what he'd done was invalid and unconstitutional, and we, we, won, we won our court case. But Lee's freedom was short-lived. Even though the deportation order was ruled invalid, the Home Affairs Minister, Peter Dutton, used his extraordinary powers to cancel Lee's visa again. And after just one night of freedom, he was arrested and put back into detention. His family was crushed. You know, just see their faces, you know, it's, they haven't seen me for 22 months, you know, and, uh, and then tell them that, hey, your, your, your dad's visa's been cancelled again. It just broke them. Yeah. How'd they react? Ah, oh, they just, they just, they were shattered. They just, um, yeah, they just broke down. Yeah, so it was, um, yeah, it was pretty heartbreaking. Yeah, so over here is uh, another spot for healing. You usually see them coming through here. Lee's entire extended family in Australia made the decision to pack up and leave and return to New Zealand to restart their life together in the town where he was born, Blenheim. It's more fun catching with your beer hands, really. Lee is you know? unrepentant about his membership of the motorcycle club, which Australia has outlawed and which cost him his visa. You know, end of the day, they look past the, the club thing. They just still see me as the normal little Kiwi boy that left this town. And they just look straight through that. And they always ask me, are you still in the club? And I tell them, yep, I'm still with the club. I'm not, no, I'm not going to hide it. But, you know, end of the day, my friends, my family, my brothers are the ones I'm worried about. I'm, don't, I'm not worried about those judgmental people. Because that doesn't bother me. With more than half a million New Zealanders living in Australia, cases like Lee's have caused deep concerns in New Zealand's capital, where the Justice Minister is determined to take the fight back to the Australian government. What I have said to the Australian authorities, we will continue to talk about this, call things out, take up individual cases where we think there's been an egregious level of unfairness and, and see if we can effect change through that way. Does it concern you that uh, a higher proportion of the deportees that are being sent back are Maori? 
Uh, that is concerning. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know of the 600,000 New Zealanders what proportion are Māori. Um, I do know that of all deportees out of Australia, roughly a half are New Zealanders. We are a big chunk of those being deported. And I do wonder whether there might be some systemic bias there. After a century of cherished friendship, the diplomatic relationship between Australia and New Zealand is at its lowest point in living memory. As the Chilean relations sets in, at Christchurch Airport, the stream of deportees from Australia continues unabated. The latest to arrive, 34-year-old Matt Shaw, deported after serving a short jail sentence for stealing copper wire. I've got nothing, all my kids, family, mum, dad, all back in Australia. I've got nothing here at all. It's been 10 years since I've been here, and yeah, I've got nothing. For Matt, the time served in prison was just part of his sentence. It's been a long time since I've been in the open. No cages around me. He faces the bitter reality that he's been banished from Australia, uncertain if he'll ever be allowed to return. Look at that. Oh, wow. No. For now, this hostel is home. I'll give you a second chance, you know what I mean? Then if you blow it, I thought we were like brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? We were supposed to be all in one type thing, you know, and then it's just now it's, it's just crap. Like, they're just deporting Kiwis like no tomorrow. Cool, thank you. In Australia's capital, Canberra, symbols of the special relationship with New Zealand in both peace and war are to be found everywhere. But as the Australian government continues to insist that living in Australia is a privilege and not a right for their New Zealand neighbours, and the New Zealand government protests the human rights violations of its citizens, the treasured friendship between these Pacific Ocean neighbours could well be tested to breaking point.